That's a scripture that people want to argue with you about. Well, I can take myself. I can do it myself. No, you can't because here's what it says. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Any man, okay? Can't be done. Once you're saved, you're sealed. Hey, I use that same thing Dr. Curtis Hudson used. Seal me up in a drum, seal that drum, stick that drum in a little larger drum and seal that drum, put them two drums in a bigger drum and seal that drum. The, outside, the outer drum is, is God, the inner drum is Jesus, and I'm inside those two. You're going to come through God and Jesus, get to me. Can't pluck me out, can't pluck me out, okay? See, our, our fellowship with God is, is temporary in nature. And it hinges upon our, again, our obedience to him and our willingness, our willingness to walk with him on a daily basis. See, this is a clear teaching over in 1 John 1, 7. But if, you, if we walk in the light, as he, as he is in the light, we have fellowship, there's that word, fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Did you hear all that? Did you get all that? If you didn't, Write it down, read 1 John 1, 7 when you get home. We are, to walk, we are to walk in his light if we wish to enjoy, again, his fellowship, his fellowship on an ongoing basis. We, we should be thankful for, our, again, our, our relationship with the, with the Lord, okay? Thank God that, that it's eternal, y'all, and that we, do not, we don't have to worry about losing that blessed connection uh, because we can't, because we can't. However, we should be very, very aware that we can fall out of fellowship with the Lord, and that is why, again, we need to have a, a consciousness, you might say, of sin that may be in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. You say, I don't sin, preacher. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not, I'm not a murderer. And Now, my mouth runs. I'm a gossiper, and I talk about people, but does that, does that count? Mm-hmm. I think somewhere in here you're going to find every idle word. Every idle word. I, I think it's in there. I read it one time. That's, your, I, 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 that's where you sin. Do you, do you really, when you do things like that, do you really confess them to God? Do you really I guarantee you probably don't. I was riding down the road the other day and I said something. Brother Randy in the meeting, I said, God, forgive me. Forgive me for saying that. God cut me off. I mean, it wasn't nasty. It was just a, the thought of it. Just the, <laughs> I know y'all think I cussed, but I didn't cuss. I, I quit that years ago. But I just thought, it just came, and I said, I said it mis, under my breath. I didn't say that out loud. Miss Cynthia, but I said, I'm a, but I said it. And I had to ask God to forgive me for it right then. I had to say, God, forgive me for that. See, we, we need him, and we must, we must shun sin uh, so we can have the fellowship that we need to have with him, okay? So with that in mind, when, when sin rears its ugly head up in our lives and, and in our mind, we, we don't need to try to hide it. We, we, need to, we need to attempt, hey, we don't need to sweep it under the rug. We don't need to sweep it under the rug somewhere. Rather, 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 we need to drag it out into the light of God's, of God's word and confess it, okay? And we need to deal with it immediately. And that's the only way, that's the only way that our sins, again, can ever be forgiven and our fellowship restored with our Father. God's way of dealing with sin is clear and, and, and it's, it's painful, but it's clear, uh, but it, it's productive. Turn with me to Proverbs. Let's just fan through the Bible tonight a little bit. Let's turn back to Proverbs, okay? That's back in the Old Testament, okay? And let's go to, let's go to chapter 32. I feel like turning some pages tonight for some reason. I don't know why. What did I say? Proverbs? Ain't no proverb. 
I'm in Psalms. <laughs> Why'd y'all say that? Why'd y'all say, when are you going to Proverbs 32 for? <laughs> y'all find that and y'all read it to me. <laughs> y'all read it to me, okay? I'm in, I'm in, y'all be in Proverbs all you want to, 32. I'm in Psalms. I'm in Psalms 32. And I'm going to read verse, we're going to read verse 5, okay? Look what Psalms 30, and this is David's writing, okay? Keep that in mind. This is David's writing. See? But look what it says. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. Don't hide it. I said, I will, hey, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. Okay. Now, how about Psalms 51? Let's turn over there. Now, that is Psalms. That ain't Proverbs either. Okay. All right. Verses 1 through 6. Let's see if we read them all. This is David again writing. He said, this is after all this Bathsheba thing, okay? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy, hey, look there, thy loving kindness, according to thy, the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my trans. See, he acknowledges it. He, he brings it out in the light of God's word. And he says, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, ah, oh, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clean when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou de desirest truth in, in the way, in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Wow. Wow. Here again. Here again. And I, and I did want to go to Proverbs somewhere. Oh, I know where I want to go. Proverbs 28. There, that, that's in there, ain't it? Proverbs 28, it's sandwiched in there between 31, so forth. Let's go back to Proverbs. I want to read Proverbs too. I forgot about it. Maybe I got ahead of myself. Proverbs 28, what did I say a while ago? I didn't. 28, 13. 28, 13. Happy, look here. Happy is the man that, that what? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm just confused. I turned my knee over the other night. Hey, 28, 13, right, George? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's what I was talking about. It's painful, okay? Because he that covereth his sins will not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh. Now, that's important too, though. You can, you can confess them, but you must forsake them, okay? Them shall, hey, them shall have mercy. Now, if we go to 1 John, and y'all know this in my heart, but if we'll fan back to 1 John chapter 1, uh, uh, let me find it here. 1 John chapter 1 and, uh, and verse uh, 999, 999, yeah. Ah, come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. There it is. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, y'all know it by heart. This is important. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, it, it's, it's painful, but it's productive. It's productive. Instead of hiding our sins, we should drag them again out into the light and confess them as far as they are, hey, as, as far as they are known. When it comes time to deal with with our sin before the Lord, we should confess them to Him. The word, hey, that word confession just means to agree with or to say the same thing as. So what it's saying is God wants us to reach the same place He's He 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 He's at, okay? And He is He's concerned about our sins, y'all. And and we should be concerned about our sins. Again, it breaks it breaks fellowship. 
He wants us to see sin as, as, as the horror it is, the pain it is, the, the perversion it is. He wants to see it just like that's the way he looks at it. See, that's what he sees in sin. He wants us to deal with sin like he would deal with sin, okay? Again, we should hate the same thing God hates. We should hate the very same things he hates. He wants, a, he wants me to judge it in my own life. And if I do, if I do, I can bypass his judgment and his chastisement. Y'all know 1 Corinthians 11, 31, 32. For if we, hey, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be, hey, we should not be judged. But when we are, when we, hey, but when we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord. That, that should be, that, hey, we don't, we shouldn't want, we shouldn't want to be chastised by the Lord, God. We shouldn't want to be chastised by the Lord. Uh, when, when, uh, let me remind you that, that this prayer, again, is a family prayer, y'all. We're talking to the Father. How does it start off? Very simply, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we're talking to the Father. He is a loving, tender, gracious, forgiving, okay, merciful God. His mercies endure forever. When his children or his child comes to him confessing their sin, their sins and their failures and their shortcomings, whatever they may be, God tenderly hears us, receives us, and forgives us, okay, for his glory, for his glory. My mama used to tell me, she said, son, you, if you just be honest with mama, you, you, your punishment won't be as bad. And I knew what real bad was. That was a whooping with a whole lot of O's in it, okay? And I was the one doing the O's. Okay, but then maybe if I fessed up, it'd be just taking the keys away from me or the car for a week, okay? Maybe going to my room, you know, locking me in there for a month. No, <laughs> wasn't that bad. I had food rations in it, no. So that's the way he is. He, he's the same way. He, he, has, he has a lot invested in, in this relationship, y'all. More than we have, and more than we can even comprehend what he's got invested in. it. We didn't hang on the cross with him. We should have, should have been us, but it wasn't us. See, he will restore me and you to that place of closeness, that place of fellowship when I come clean about my sins. And I deal, I deal with them his way, his way. So we won't deal with our sins our way, but we've got to deal with them his way. Uh, this simple prayer is about our confession, uh, confessing our problems before the Lord and our, and our voice and our plea to God for forgiveness. Again, if we could ever learn to do this, this his way, we, we would walk in a constant victory with him forever, okay? We'd, we'd, we'd be in victory all the time. So let's move on. This prayer, again, the model prayer, this prayer involves a condition. The, the most difficult part of, of this prayer is this last part. Honestly, it's this last part. And here's why. Because it deals with others. When this prayer is understood correctly it is a prayer for God to extend forgiveness to me and the same degree that I am to extend forgiveness to others you've read it you know it you look at it and forgive and forgive us our debts as we what forgive our debtors folks that's a scary thought. That's a scary thought. So let's just look at it in depth. When I refuse to, to maintain fellowship with other believers that are in my family, 
in the family of God. That don't mean just our, us folk in this building. I don't mean just the folk of Fairhaven Independent Baptist Church. It don't mean just the family of Fairhaven Independent Baptist Church. It means folk outside these walls. It means folk probably in, the, in, in other, hey, states and countries, okay? It means folk in God's family. See, if I refuse to maintain fellowship with other believers of the family of God, it affects my own fellowship with God. That's what that's saying. Regardless of what anyone does to me in this life, it could never possibly rise to the same level of my guilt before the Lord. Jesus illustrated that truth. Let's go to Matthew. We're right here at it. Matthew 18. Okay? Matthew 18. I can hit my glass on. Hold on a minute. Matthew 18, 18, 18. And we're not going to, well, may, we may, I don't know, we'll see. We may not read all this, but y'all probably know it anyway, I hope. But we may read it all too. All right, Matthew 18, 15 through 34, or 35 maybe. If you're looking at it, pretty much everything there is red lettered. So who y'all think is doing the talk? Jesus. Jesus is. So let's look at it. Verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall mm -mm -mm, if thy brother shall transpass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. This is something that I try to tell people all the time. They'll come to me and won't know how to do this and that. I said, have you talked to them yet? Have you talked to that person yet? Well, no. That's first step. That's first step. Second step is, is then you take somebody with you. I was in one of those one time. I was in one of those one time. And it's, it's, not, a fun, it's not a fun event, okay? But let's move on. But if we, <clears throat> look here. But if he will not hear thee, then thou, and look here, then thou, then with thee, wow, boy, oh boy. Then take with thee one or two more that, hey, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. I was in that situation one time. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him, be, hey, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Three steps. Go to them. Take somebody with you. Okay, so others go witnesses with you. And then take to the church. Verily I say unto you, whosoever you shall, uh, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, take, hey, uh, that if Two of you shall agree on earth as touching one uh, anything that, hey, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We go on down here and we read 20, 22 uh, and so on and so forth. We're not going to read through all that. But the point I'm trying to make here is this, y'all. This, this lesson is clear. If I expect the Lord to forgive me when I cry out to him, then I, then I, I got to be quick to forgive those who have wronged me. I, I, I'm to forgive them in the same level that I have been forgiven. Think about that. Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath done what? Hath forgiven you. Think of what you had done, what I did for 29 years to my Lord, but he forgave me. When I asked him, he forgave me. If I refuse to forgive my brother, 
then I should not expect the Lord to forgive me. After all, he, 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 he is clear that, that, for, that for, if we don't get this forgiveness, we got a wedge. We, we got we to gotta get, we get it back. We got to get it back to get the fellowship back. For if you, hey, for if you give me, me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you, but if you forgive not, if you forgive not, their trespasses, men's trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. Okay, the Bible's clear, y'all. It's clear, and, and this prayer is what this is. What this prayer is saying. And this is the model prayer. This is the prayer. We're, we're not to quote this prayer. It's a model that we go by. Okay? It's the way we should pray to the Heavenly Father. The Bible's clear. When we, when we have been wronged, offended, hurt by, by some other person, we are to carry, we are to carry, we just read it, we are to carry that need before the, hey, before the, the person, try to get it resolved. All those steps we went through, but we need to carry it to the Lord too. If they don't forgive, if they if they don't accept it, then we just take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. See, he'll he'll take care of it. I never will forget. We were at uh, we were at the uh, some of y'all were there. We were at the camp meeting out there at uh, Bethel on that Wednesday night, a few Wednesday nights ago. And Brother Kurt had preached a tremendous message. It drew me to the altar because there were some people there in that, in, in that building with me that I knew had some feelings toward me and maybe they thought or I had feelings toward them, whatever. So Miss Cynthia, I prayed. And I asked God, I said, give me a green light what I'm supposed to do here. What I need to do because this this has gone on long enough, and there's no reason for. I, I love these people, and I, and 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 I don't. We don't need no wedges between us. You wouldn't want that. And if I if I can't forgive them, they can't forgive me. We got a problem, and and I'll have a problem with you if I don't. And I knelt and prayed, went back to my seat, had kind of bowed my head down, and said, God, where's the green light? Where's the green light? What am I supposed to do? And I looked up, and there they were. They got the same, <laughs> they got the green light before I got the green light. But there they were. We embraced, we said we loved each other, and that's the, hey, boy, that, that's it. That's done. I don't, I don't have a problem forgiving people, y'all. There's one thing that I don't do. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hold grudges. I, I do not do it. I've had people, I told y'all one time, about a, a, a man who sued my company. I just started my company, sued me. I, I lost 80 something thousand dollars back in the 70s. That was like a million dollars to me. <clears throat> Fighting a lawsuit that I knew I was not guilty of. And I would have won it except for the fact that when it got down to where I had spent 80 something thousand dollars to try to defend myself for something I had not done, he dropped the case. I said, what am I? I asked my attorney, I said, what am I supposed to do now? He said, well, you could go back through it and sue him if you want to. And I said, what? I don't get any restitution here. I don't get anything for this. He don't owe me $80,000. He said, no, he don't owe you nothing. I said, man, he's just about bankrupt my company. I just got started. I can't, I can't, I can't what am I supposed to do? You can't do nothing unless you want to sue him. And we'll go back to the process and probably cost you another 60, 70 thousand. That fellow called me about six months later. He said, can we have lunch? I said, who's buying? <laughs> I said, who's buying this lunch? And meet me at so-and-so. And here's the way this happened. This is how this happened. When I left there, we shook hands. And I said, "There's, you know, we're fit. it's done. We're good. We're good. I don't have any. I don't have any problem with you at all." That was hard to do. I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on God because I was a saved man then. 
Had I still been 27, eight years old, it would have been a totally different story. A totally different story. <laughs> but see, that's the way this is supposed to happen. That's what this is saying, y'all. That's what this is saying. We are to forgive them and to let them, hey, let the offense go. Let the offense go. Read Luke 17, 1, 5. Won't do it tonight. Colossians. It's in Colossians 3. It's in 1 Corinthians. It's all in the Bible there. But let me, let me try to make this matter practical for us tonight. When you have wronged someone and you know it, you are to go to them, confess your wrong, and seek their forgiveness. Matthew, we're right there, but Matthew 5, 23 says, Therefore, if I, if I bring a gift to the altar, and then you have remembrance, you remember that your brother has aught with you, leave it and go, go see your brother. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. Some people never grow in the Lord, and they wonder why. The answer is very simple. It's as simple as this. You need to go to those who have offended or you have offended and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your fellowship with the family of God and with the Heavenly Father will never, never be what it should be if you don't. It'll never be what it should be if you don't. The others have been hurt and offended and they wear their pain uh, like a heavy weight, like a lead weight uh, on their heart and their soul. If you, if you ever expect to get past it, you must forgive. You must forgive that person uh, and forget it. Let it go. Let it go. It may involve you going to them and telling them, See, Matthew 18, 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go, go and tell him. Go tell him his fault between ye and he. Okay? See, if the person repents, then all is well. Everything's good. Did that guy repent that day? I don't really know if he did, but he was very apologetic. Uh, he tried to mend all the wrongs that I felt he had done against me, but it didn't matter because it had to come from me too. I had to get there too. I was the bigger loser than he was because he, he had had a company for years and years and years and had a lot of money. But let me tell you what I think about all that. And I hope you understand. I hope you take this the right way. In six months, he was blind. He was blind. I don't know if God did that. I don't know why. Maybe if he did. But anyway, he was blind. But I just put it behind me. I put it behind me. I, I just, that was it. It was, it was over. It was done. That, that chapter of my life was finished then. Okay. Wound up dissolving my business and going back to work. Everything's good. Everything was still good. I'm okay. Okay, so again, this whole thing, when you harbor resentment, hurt feelings that, that, that just grind at you when you do that because someone else has said or done something about you that you are hurting, they hurt you in some way, you need to get, hey, you need to get before the Lord because you can't, you can't make them do anything. But you can get before the Lord and he'll deal with it with them. I guarantee you, he'll deal with it. We'll stop here and we'll move on to our next phrase, uh, phase, uh, phrase uh, next week, hopefully. Okay, and look at it before we go. You might want to just think about it. It's in verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay? All right, let's get...